Do you want to save some money and make your own junk journal charms? Of course you do! You're not going to believe how simple these journal charms are to make. You're going to be making your own chipboard. So we're going to start off, I'm going to show you how to make the charm blanks. You can embellish them as much as you like, but what I've done is make them simple, punch holes in them, and we're using bulb pins. Now put an Amazon link in the description below for the US ladies. We're going to make six in all. I'm going to start by showing you how to make the blanks first from cardboard. So I've just used a basic craft cardstock. It doesn't matter whether you use under 200 gram or whether you use 280 or 300 GSM because we're going to layer them all together. So start off, you can use scrap pieces or you can just cut up your A4 or letter size sheet. What you're going to need is however wide you want to make your charm and then you need to cut that into four pieces because we're layering four pieces together. This piece here is five eighths wide. So you cut your strip and then you cut them into four pieces the same length. So get your first piece and use it as a template to cut the other three pieces. You can make these blanks as long as you like. I'm going to use a, a variety of glues today. You can just use any wet glue. So I've got a Tombow liquid glue and a Barely Art liquid glue. When I put my glue down, I put it in away from the edge. Then I put my top piece on that and slide it around so it pushes it out towards the edge a little bit. Then I just square it up, making all of these pieces even, and then squash it down with my bone folder. It's important to do this step so that these two pieces are sandwiched together really tight. Then do the same again. Move that piece of cardboard backwards and forwards until you move the glue closer to the edge and then squash it together with your fingers as you walk your fingers around the edge and just keep doing that until your whole four pieces are all layered together that's going to make you like a piece of chipboard so keep flattening them together with your fingers and using your bone folder now we're going to use sandpaper to make them look like they're just one piece of chipboard. You can use sandpaper, you can use a nail file, emery board, whatever you've got. So start sanding all of the edges all the way around. And these layered pieces where you see they're layered will start joining together. As well as the sanding motion smoothing it all out, this little particles of cardboard will fill them gaps and you'll get what looks like just one level piece of cardboard. You can sand however feels comfortable to you. But see how it's starting to all smooth out now? So it doesn't look like four layers of cardboard anymore. It looks like just one piece. Now I just want to take the sharp edge off all of the corners. So just go like that, just lightly. You only just want to rub it over very, very lightly. We're not rounding them, we're just smoothing them. Now we're going to do the actual pointy corners. You don't have to do this, it's optional. I just, you can leave them square. I just like that very tiny rounded look. Again, it adds to the finish and makes them look just that little more than just a little piece of cardboard. But you can see now how much difference it makes by using your sanding block. I'm using the vintage photo and I do both sides. I come in from one side and I stain the edges. I do like the sides. Then when I finish this side, 
I'm going to flip it over and do the other side because this is a double sided charm. So when you get to this stage, it looks like chipboard that's been cut out by a laser cutter. So now we're going to move on and we're going to make our first charm using really old tape measures. Now I've got both really old cloth tape measures and some plasticky ones. And this is a cloth one. I'm going to leave these metal ends on them and I'm going to use them as part of the decoration. Now just a tip here, if you're going to use a tape measure like this, you wouldn't make your blank first and then just throw your tape measure on it. You would get your tape measure, put it on here and make it to measure. Excuse the pun. You can put it right on the edge like this, but I find it looks better with a tiny border because it just shows off that edge stain and again takes this charm to another level. So go ahead, cut out your cardstock and make your blank for your tape measure. Now you've got your blank made, just lay your tape measure on top, just lift it up a fraction from the bottom and cut it shorter than the top by a fraction. Just so you've got that border the same at the top and the bottom as you would from the sides. If you want to get rid of your clean cut edge just fray it a little bit with your pokey tool. You'll need a second piece because it's a double sided charm so cut a second piece the same size as your front piece so you can fray out those cut edges a little bit. Now I'm swapping out to use the fabric glue because my tape measure is fabric so I'm just using the Helma fabric glue. If you're in USA, you would use the Fabri-Tac. So I've got my fabric glue in a squeezy bottle. Again, I'm just going to put some toward the middle, not right on the edge. Now when I lay my tape measure down on this, I'm not going to press it heavy. It will push through the tape. So I'm just going to wiggle a bit of tape on that metal piece and lay it on there and very gently I'm just going to pat it down very gently because honestly it will come through and you'll have stained marks from your glue and you can see I hardly touch that at all and just to make sure it's nice and flat I'm going to use my bone folder to very lightly tap it down a little bit more and while that's drying, I just put one side of my wider tape down. And then when that was done, I'm coming back to put the other side on my pink one. And I do about half a dozen here, so I just alternate between them. Just remember to use a very light hand. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, this one here is not the fabric tape. This is the plasticky sort of tape, so I'm just using the barely art glue for this one and I'm making sure my tape is going the same way so that when I spin it over that it's matching. I forgot to put the distress ink on this one I'm going to come along and add this after the tape measures dry. Now I've left my tape sitting on the table for a good hour to dry and I'm going to pop the hole in here now. You'll have a bit of trouble if you try and use a handheld punch like this one unless you've got a cropper dial. You won't get through the whole four layers. So if you're going to use a hand punch like this one, I suggest that you do a single layer when you're cutting out your single pieces, but you've got to have it dead spot on each layer. So when you glue your pieces together, all those holes match up. But I'm just going to use my Big Bite and it goes through these four layers so easy. So I just put a center mark on one end. It's got two hole sizes, a 1 8 and a 3 16 I'm using the 1 8 
hole for these little charms. And these are the bulb pins. These work really well. You don't need to put those eyelets in here. They do finish them off nicely if you decide to, but I have a hit and a miss with them. They don't always work for me. So depending on what you put on these, they don't need them. I think these look good enough without eyelets. So if you're in the charity shop or at an auction anywhere and you see any old tape measures, grab them. They make the perfect journal charm. And I love how this one turned out. It is so simple. But when I popped this in the front of my journal here and got the little tiny white one on the side, I love it. I really love how this one turned out. Now this one here I got from the charity shop the other day. It's a wallpaper and it's sort of got that flock. It's a raised pattern on it and it's paintable. So I went through my card stock and I've got some about 300 GSM. There's white and there's cream and it's definitely the cream. So you don't always need to make these out of craft card stock. You can use any color card stock you like and it works. So I'm just cutting out some of the trim off this wallpaper. You only need a front and a back, just like I use for the tape measure. You need a front piece and a back piece, but I'm just using wallpaper instead of the tape measure. So I've got my two pieces cut. I've got a wide piece, and this one I trimmed down a bit more and made it narrow. I'm using an oval punch here and I'm just going to cut out some random pieces. So I only need a front and a back again where I like the pattern the most. But I do need four pieces of the cardboard to make for my chipboard. So I still need four layers for the wide one, four for the narrow and four for the oval. So I've made my cream color chipboard blanks and now all I have to do is glue the wallpaper on top, on the front and on the back. What could be easier than this? And I've left it this color because what I can do with this is, is so neutral. I can come back later on and depending on what journal I'm making, I can color this. I can color it with Distress Ink. I can color it with acrylic paint. And I can make it match my journal. So I'm going to leave this one, the cream color, until I decide what color to paint it with later. But to be honest, I really like this neutral color. And you see the raised design on the wallpaper? And, it, and actually, it feels really lovely in my hand. The oblong shape looks just as good. Now, you can see that I've pretty well left my corner square on this one. I didn't just do that slight rounded edge like I did on the craft cardboard. And you would not know this is four layers of cardboard put together. So now we're up to journal charm number three. I'm using the vintage German paper tape. You could use washi if you don't have any paper tape like this. This paper tape's like deli paper, but with a print on it. And I'm pretty sure they use it like to measure how much is in a roll of fabric or something. So just make your blank, cut out how much you want of your tape or your washi. So if you're using washi, you just make your blank to fit and you, you can really see that this blank is just that tiny bit wider than my tape. This paper tape is really really thin. You could use a double sided tape. So this one looks beautiful finished up. I really really love this tape. Journal charm number four. We're going to use tissue paper and wrap it around the charm and add some buttons. I know we've got button lovers out there everywhere. Now my friend Deb 
just lives down the road she made this paper it's really old tissue paper and she just splattered coffee and tea and gold paint and black paint and everything on it so thanks Deb so you you work out how wide you want it I've used it two inches and I cut it on an angle so that I can wrap it on an angle you have got to put it up fairly high so that when you wrap it around the back that you can't see any of the charm and then we cut that off later you could leave your little piece of paper really long and then when you finish wrapping it then cut it off just put a bit of glue on your charm lay your first piece down on the edge and as you wrap it around you just keep on adding some glue to make sure that it's just going to stay there because it's tissue paper don't over glue because it if you use too much glue you're just going to push it out and it's going to go everywhere you want to wrap it reasonably tight as well and see how it gives you a lot of variation of you know all those paint splatters it looks really good so do that last bit and you can cut this off before you glue it down is what I should have done and I just cut it off now right now I'm going to cut off the top and bottom excess paper and any bits that are missing some glue just pop a little bit more glue in there I it would have been easier if I glued the ends before I finished wrapping it but again I forgot right now they're finished the one on the right here with these buttons that I'm putting down now I actually used doily to wrap around that so I tea stained a doily and then the center of the doily is at the top and then the the holy part of the doily turned out wrapping around the bottom and it looks really nice so I've glued the buttons on that so now I just punch the hole and put my pin in and glue the last button down on this one I put a bit of brown thread through the button just to you know so it didn't look so bare and these button ones turned out really nice I don't use a lot of buttons but I do like this one okay we got through those pretty quickly we're up to journal charm number five and I'm using old matchbox covers these are the matchbook style thanks Deb these make the best charms at first I thought mm, how am I going to use these and now I love them so I've just cut four ovals keep your window shape this will come in really handy in a moment make your blanks up the same way you have done your oblong shapes glue them up sand them distressing the edges and then go through your matches and pick out the images that you want to use to glue on the front and the back so this one here I just use this one as a square because the oval just didn't work on it so be prepared to change the shape if you need to so it turned out pretty good so I just want to point out to you sometimes you might only need to use three layers so this one here has only got three layers so see how thick this matchbox is by the time you put a front and a back on it it will turn out a bit thicker so just bear in mind sometimes you only need to make your blank three layers thick not four but that's entirely up to you so just cut your matchbox open whether it's the flip style or the slide style makes no difference put it in your punch work out where you want your image to land in that punch so this is the flip out style you pretty much have to cut this off because it, you won't be able to slide the whole book into the punch so use your tweezers and your thumb to maneuver it down into the punch once you've got it into position bear in mind you've got to punch a hole in the top 
So leave an area, so your images, see how it's down to the right at the bottom? And I've left a blank space at the top. That's so you can punch your hole in to hang your charm. And this one here, I've been able to leave the flint on, and that looks really cool on it. So I've got my blanks made, ready to go. I'm just going to go around my matchbook covers, around the edge, just so that you can't see that white edge. I'm still going to keep my technique where I put my glue line in a little bit away from the edge. But don't they look great? You would never know that it come from a box of matches. And that one's ready to put a hole and a pin in it. Now I've glued all the others down and I'm just going to use my sandpaper to distress the edge a little bit. I'm not going to do it evenly all the way around. I'm going to do a bit of a hit and miss. And then you can come back in with a bit of ink and just hit and miss around the edge. Don't do it perfect. Just put some color here and there. Right, so I've just punched the holes in, put the pins in, and they're ready to use in my journal. Thanks again, Deb. Honestly, I love them so much. And here is junk journal charm number six. If you're a Daphne's diary lover, you're going to love this one too. These look so cute. I'm making a junk journal out of this Daphne's diary. So I, I thought, yes, I'll definitely make a couple of charms using some of the pages. Instead of tearing out my page, I used my craft knife and it just comes out so much easier. So I'm just cutting this out around the edge that was in the magazine. And now all I've got to do is cut it down smaller to fit inside my charm blank. I color the edges with vintage photo and glue that in place. Now for the flip side of this charm, I just use the same page and this bit here fits and the colors match. You find that with the Daphne's Diary, all of the colors just go so well together. Now this one here, I'm gonna use my blank to get the right size. You can use a plain color and it works just as well. Because it's a charm, it's gonna spin around on the side of your journal or wherever you hang it from. So these are the two Daphne's Diary charms that I made. I love the paintbrush one. I think it turned out so good. So if you've got your Daphne's Diary there and look how well this matches. It just looks so good. Oh, I'll give you the heads up. I'm going to make this Daphne's Diary journal and as soon as I've released a video, I'll let you know when it's finished. So be on the lookout. I've got some great techniques you haven't seen before that I'll be sharing with you all. Happy creating. Have a great time making these charms. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments below and bye for now.